That's a fluke. Mark, Joey marked that. Oh, keeper, keeper. Could be, could be close. All right. Who cares, Joey? <laughs> New spot, we haven't fished. Never fished here. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Next Drift. On this episode, we're looking for new fluke spots. You know, I spent a lot of time this season looking for new water. And, you know, we've got Montauk and Block are relatively close. We can go there pretty much whenever we want. But what I wanted to do was find some water that was productive and much closer to home. And, you know, that's kind of, uh, to me, is the real appeal of fluke fishing. You know, I love, you know catching a bunch of fluke. I love the way they feel when you hook into a big one. But for me, it's the hunt. And I really love using the electronics, you know, uh, using just uh, insight and uh, the past experiences and trying to find new water that maybe other people haven't touched. That's the real draw for me. And, you know, so we, uh, I called up Dino and Joey and I said, look, we've got good weather. Let's go out and do some, uh, you know, scouting and find some new water and maybe run into a place that has a big school of untouched fish. Fish that nobody's ever fished for before. And uh, so that's what we did today. We fished all new water, and we had a great, great time. So what I think we'll do in this episode, we'll kind of um, go back to the basics. I have a lot of people sending questions in, asking, you know, what kind of rod, what kind of lures, how, you know, how heavy of a bucktail, what type of teaser, how deep do I go? You know, I think I'm going to try to cover that in this episode. We're going to really get into the how-tos, get back down to basics, and uh, hopefully, whether you're a, a beginner fluke fisherman or a seasoned guy, maybe you'll find something, you know, useful out of this video. As always, if you like this content, please like, comment, and subscribe. Point eight, point seven, Joey. We're going up. Going up, boys. It rips through here pretty good, too. Yeah. yeah. It's not a very popular fluke spot by any means. That's why I wanted to fish it. Guys come out here and they sea bass and stuff. But nobody hits it real hard for fluke. Yeah, they fish up by the can up on top of the shoal, you know, but we're way off of it. Well, my best spots have had lobster pots on them, and I didn't see these lobster pots before we pulled up, so that's a good, good sign. I know it's pretty rocky. It's pretty rocky up there on the shoal. So maybe there's some chunky, chunky rock out here. <coughs> A lot of life down there. Everybody keep your eyes out when you reel your shit up for squid. Now let's unpack some of that right there. You know, we first talked about the area that we were fishing and how it was known uh, more as a sea bass porgy area. And... You know, that's something to consider when you're looking for a new spot. Maybe fishing an area that other people don't target a uh, fluke for is the type of area that you want to start fishing, and that's what we did here. You know, we were fishing an area that has a big shoal on it, and we were way out off of uh, the shoal, fishing some structure that was out off one of the sides. It was a kind of a long point that stuck out. It was about 75, 80 feet deep. You know, I've really been this year focusing on, you know, trying to find areas that 
consistently have the same type of depth, same type of bottom, uh, bait fish activity, and um, you know this area was a long point that kind of stuck out and uh, dropped off in about 100 feet of water on one side. And you know the other thing too is that this shoal was very rocky up on the top, so I figured if we got kind of close to that, we would be able to find some chunkier rock out here, uh, you know, amongst the sand and gravel. And this year, you know, a lot of the areas that we've been fishing are gravelly, sandy areas with sporadic chunk rock mixed in. And every so often, you'll feel your bucktail kind of touch one of those bigger rocks. They're not huge boulders. They're just, you know, smaller size rocks. And uh, that's where we ended up catching a lot of fluke this year. So be willing to maybe look at an area a little bit differently than everybody else. Get out off the side of it. Pay attention to what type of bait fish are there and uh, just really get a feel for what the bottom feels like. You can look at it on a fish finder all day, but that's not going to tell you exactly what's down there. This is a feel thing, and uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. But, you know, it had all the right makings for the perfect fluke spot. Come on, it's got to be a big one. A little rip forming. Ooh, that was a big one. That was a better one. I don't know if it's big. I don't see big, but. Ugh. Oh, that's a good one, Joseph. Joey. Yeah, buddy. Is it a fluke? That's a fluke. Could be a sea bass. Luke, could be a keeper. Hold on, coming. Yeah, yeah. If you got, got a bit, I'm bit, getting bit. Uh, no, it's not a keeper, Joey. I don't think so. It might be. Yeah. No, but it's a fluke. Nice job on the pink, huh? That that fish I missed was felt good. Oh. So you saw me go up to the GPS and mark that fish that Joey caught. And you know, I've had a couple people ask me, you know, why would you mark a fish that wasn't a keeper? Well, especially when I'm fishing a new spot and I'm really trying to get an understanding of it, I'm going to mark everything. If it's a fluke, we're marking it. Uh, I don't mark sea bass. We don't mark sea robins or anything like that. Only fluke. And what you'll find is that over time, you'll build a picture on your GPS of a spot on a spot. I want something visual. I want to be able to go back over that spot maybe the same day, maybe another day, and you come back to that area. You'll find over time that you'll build a, a really solid picture of what's on that spot, where you know the fluke are holding on that particular piece of, of you know structure or on that drift, and then you'll be able to go back and short drift those areas. And you'll know almost every time a lot of the spots that we catch fish, you know, we'll go over it and we won't, we won't be looking at the GPS. You'll catch a fish, you run up, hit the mark button, and you find that, you know, there was three or four other marks that you had put there previously. And man, let me tell you, that's how I really feel like we're able to catch fluke consistently is to be able to have a history and know where that spot is every single time and dissect it. And a lot of times, you know, it'll be a spot that maybe holds a lot of fish. Maybe it's just a big fish spot. But if you do that, uh, you'll be able to, to kind of build that picture like I had mentioned. And you'll be able to go back to it for a long, long time. And it is a great way to really learn a new area. Or maybe learn something new about an area that you've fished uh, uh, quite often. I can't recommend it enough. If you really want to catch more fluke, hit that mark button. Just mark them, whether it's a 10-incher or a 10-pounder. Just mark it. Yep, I set it up. The, uh, spoon. That's on the spoon. Yeah, 
That looks like a fluke. No, that looks like a fluke, man. You know, might have a fluke on a fluke spoon. Let me know if you need the net, Holmes. Oh, nice fluke. Oh, yeah. Joey, go net that. Doormat. Doormat. <laughs> fluke on the fluke spoon. Color fluke spoon. Silver? Yeah. All right. Okay. Joey, mark that. Could be. It's close. Oh, look at that, Dean. On the, on the fluke spoon. You need more for strips, Dean? Huh? You got a light weight on there, huh? Yeah, lighten it up. I don't want to drag it. Just yeah. make it thinner, though. Thinner? Here, let me show like you. Let me show you. Yeah. Because the fluke are gonna be like, "Excuse me, waiter." Yeah. Hey, you want him? Give me a thinner fillet. Well, it won't. It won't have as much action. Oh, it won't. Nope. This one too. Yeah. I like. It. There's too much meat on it. I'm out of here. Here I can. Here you go, look. Alright, I got a piece of uh, switch going on here. As soon as I eat this off, I'm gonna get that. Oh, double. Oh, jig and pig. So I don't know what happened to this clip, but it looks like it was taken in 10 times speed. But anyway, I had switched over to double salmon red gulp, 6-inch grub, on both my teaser and bucktail, and boated this nice keeper here. And the reason I wanted to show this clip, even though it was kind of screwed up, you know, we had, this was on a second pass, a second drift over that same spot that we had caught those shorts and marked them on the GPS. And without those points and this fish literally came right off the little cluster of waypoints that we had marked uh when we caught those shorts and if um you know i hadn't uh had those marks i wouldn't have been able to set up the next drift to drift right over the top of them and sure enough we ended up boating a keeper and uh so that's why you know mark mark those fish even the shorts go back over them and uh, maybe you'll have the same result catch a keeper That's a good one. Yep. Did it just come off? Yep. Oh my God. That was a big one. Yep. That was a that was a big one. See if he comes back sometimes. I wish you had stopped reeling it sooner. Shut. So even though Joey lost that fish, and it was a bummer, it was a good one, it still gave us a lot of confidence. We knew we were on the right page, we knew we were in a good area, we were building on what we uh, you know, found uh, throughout the morning, and we were starting to paint that picture. We were getting an idea of where we needed to be, what depth, um, what drift speed, what colors, what weight bucktail. This was a really good thing, and we were building a new spot and uh, you know that's that's part of it losing a fish can teach you a lot we're gonna do another short drift through that jeez oh yeah that had mass There, uh -huh. and I was like, oh, there's something there. Mm -hmm. Yep, that was because he was probably swimming with it. All right, bring him up. That was a big one. So we motored back up, cut the long drift in half. We had done a longer drift. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you know, I talk about how I always like to do nice short drifts. Uh, that's when we have the spot. We know exactly where we've pinpointed exactly where we know we're going to catch fish. 
But when we're doing a scouting trip, we're doing these longer drifts, and then we start to narrow it down, narrow it down, and then we'll cut the drift in half. And in this case, I went up about 100 yards past where we had caught those fish. And, um, you know, just in order to get the boat at, you know, the right drift speed, make sure our baits got down there, make sure the presentation was really good, and try to nail those waypoints, slice them right in half. And, uh, you know, that's how you really start to, to target exactly where you want to be. bottom when you set yep but you got to get past that remember that's what you're looking for you're looking to get snagged you're not going to get snagged out here there's nothing to get snagged on and then maybe occasional rock but it's rare you feel like you're snagged it's a fluke that could have been a honker because it didn't even know it was hooked you just set into it oh brutal so after joey had lost that fish i was giving him a little bit of a ribbing and we got into a debate about fishing rods and i wanted to show him the difference between the rod i use which is the dark matter and the rod he had been using and i told him i said uh you know for a while that i thought that the action on his fishing rod was a little bit uh, too soft and uh, i think once he got to feel the two rods um you know side by side uh, he now understands uh, why it's important uh, to make sure that you have the right action rod, not only to be able to give the bucktail the right action, but also to get a, a good solid hook set in deep water. So I let Joey borrow my Skinner rod just so he could see the difference between the two. And, you know, his rod is uh, it's a fine, fine rod. It's a Nexus. I have lots of them. I really like them. But the action on this particular rod just wasn't uh, heavy enough to work a five or six ounce bucktail in 80 feet of water. And I think uh, Joey got to see the difference between the two, and now he's going to go out and uh, buy a Skinner rod. How does it? What's the difference between the rod you currently have and this and the Skinner rod? There's a lot more backbone in the Skinner rod. Mm -hmm. at the tip. So it's not as flimsy at the tip. Yep, it's, it's not, not as all the way through. not as light at the tip. A more fast action, right? It has more backbone. There's more backbone throughout the whole rod. Yep. And that's why Joey is now going to be purchasing a John Skinner rod. Link to below. To where you can get your John Skinner rod. Tight lines, bait and tackle has them online available. We'll provide the link. That's where Joey is going to order his. Just hopefully he gets it before this uh, video goes out. Before they sell out. That's true. Well, I'll let you order yours before I post it. <laughs> because I got a feeling they're pretty desirable and hard to find right now but tight lines has a whole bunch of them down there in new jersey so we'll put the link up and everybody who wants a john skinner rod can get one i'm going to order two more joey's going to order one you know i think maybe we'll have to do a john skinner rod giveaway We don't have enough subscribers yet, though. Tell your friends. Kill ourselves making these videos to only have 1,840 subscribers. So here we have a squid that Dino caught. And uh, as you can see, this is a, um, this was a, a glow, white glow, eight inch grub. And uh, we've been leaving them um, in the in mixed in with the salmon uh salmon red to try to kind of get that color a little bit but you know when you have big squid around like this you know the every time we've uh, been around big squid you know you get big big fluke 
So you can see, you know, the length is real, real close. Pink shine, I put a pink shine. I'm out of pink shine um, grubs, but I have some pink shine nemesis. So that's roughly the same length. Match the hatch. So if you take these uh, low, it doesn't have to be eight inch, you put the six inch in there as well. Throw them in with your uh, salmon red and you'll kind of get that pinkish, pinkish color that's uh, more squid-like. This one's been kind of dead, but when he first came up, he was uh, had much more of that pink, pink color. Just something to try. It's a color they haven't seen. Berkeley doesn't make it yet. All I'm going to say about this is that if you don't do it, try it and look at it in the water. It's got a lot of big fish for us this year. Money. Oh, really? well, about the same huh? It is the exact same length. I mean, that's a that's that's doormat bait. You know, I mean, wait, look. The bottom line is this: if I wanted to come out here to this same spot and catch numbers, I would put a five inch on a take a five ounce S and S swing hook, put a five inch Berkeley white Berkeley gulp. And then a hollow teaser with a four or five odd hook and a two and one of those uh what is it the four inch mullet white mullet or glow and you would catch numbers all day long you can catch a big one but if you want to catch big fish you need big baits but oh nice dude on the high oh, wall that, that's a keeper that's a keeper that looks like keeper bubba Oh my god. Yep. Good one. Good one, Joey. That's it. See how your rod's bent? Keep it just like that. That's how you fight a fish. When you up and when he's when you feel that, that weight come back up, pull up harder. It's not gonna come off. You keep that weight on. Good job, buddy. Nice. With a smirk. All right, it's fine, but you kept the bend it this time. Good job, dude. Do you know you want this? Yep. Nice job, dude. I mean, actually, you know what? I want to take one. I'm going to take a couple, too. Me and my dad. Oh, pal. That's a good one. All right. Joey redeemed himself. He's lost. Joey, give us the uh, give us what happened today because we didn't get it unfortunately on camera. Uh, or should we have Dino describe it? Dino should. Go okay, ahead, no tell us, bias. Joey. Tell us what happened. I had a nice blue turn. Hold on, we gotta wait till you're talking to the camera. Don't want to talk to the camera until you get it out. So what so, happened? So earlier I had a nice fluke on. Had the hook set, was reeling them in. We tried to get the camera, and I let up. up uh, I didn't hold the rod up high enough to keep a That's bend. That's correct. In. You didn't keep a bend in the rod. And I slowed down a little bit so we no. could try and get it on no, camera. I don't and screw we the camera. It. And we missed it. All right, but Joey redeemed himself. That's a nice fish, pal. The Good other job. one was definitely a double digit. Yeah. Oh, Joey, the infamous Joey. Lost two big fish today. Another one was probably. I don't. I don't know, man. Was it? All right. Well, that second one. That second one was a double digit. Looks like you hooked a lobster pot. Oh. All right, that's a good one. We'll take it. Oh, hold that up, Dean. Huh? Hold oh, that. In the face. <laughs> hold that. <laughs> <laughs>
Put that, kiss it. No, don't aim it at me. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Well, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of Next Drift. I hope you learned something. You know, we try to keep a good mix of entertainment and information. And this video, um, you know, I, I hope uh, kind of illustrated some of the ways in which we go out and find new fluke water. You know, it really comes down to spending the time. You know, use your electronics, use your tools, gather as much information as you can. And you'll find over time you're going to become a better fluke fisherman. You're going to catch them more consistently and hopefully out of spots where you don't see the fleet. That's what makes a real fisherman. Finding your own areas, putting in the homework, and I'll tell you, it's so much more satisfying when you can go out there and say that you found them on your own. As always, if you like this content, please like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you all real soon. Take care, everybody. Look at that bed rod, Joey! Keep the rod bent.